can say what is impossible in the world of tomorrow. Let us go into the future, into the years beyond 2000 A.D. Science fiction adventures in the world of tomorrow. 2000 plus. Today, the men from Mars. The 16th of May in the year of 2000 plus 40 started off as a perfectly ordinary day. The school bus on the jet number four had picked up Mickey and Dink as usual and whizzed them off to another tussle with higher education. The class in elementary operation of mathematical calculators plus the class in early history of the first atomic era from 1938 to 1972, plus the warm spring weather had the two boys in a dreamy, lazy mood by the time 10 hundred found them in the free research period in the school library. It was the voice on the intramural audio box that brought them out of their doldrum with a sharp snap. Take notes for a contemporary incident course. The International League of Planetary Scientists has just issued a statement that an exploratory expedition to Mars is very likely at some time in the near future. Professor H.D. White, presiding chairman of the League, has made public a statement that the existence of intelligent life on Mars in a form more or less like our own is highly probable. That is all until 1200 recap. Thank you. I guess you heard that, didn't you, Dean? Huh? I said I guess you heard that. Yeah. Yeah, I did, Mitch. Terrific, huh? I wish you'd please keep your voice down, Dave Heston. This is study period. Ah, oh, take a rocket, Maybell. And besides, there's nothing so terrific about that report. We all know they've been contemplating a trip to Mars in the near future for 150 years. What kind of a near future is 150 years? Oh, it's easy enough to sit back and be content. People like you laughed at Christopher Columbus. Who was Christopher Columbus? He sure don't know your history. Christopher Columbus was the name of the first rocket ship to get to the moon way back in 1980. And people like you said they'd never do that. Ah, uh, the moon's real close. Well, I'm in no hurry to get Mars explored. No, Maybell? Why not? Oh, I know what you mean, Dink. It could be pretty scary, those Martians. Their ears could be in their feet, and the eyes could be in the tops of their heads, and the mouths. For all I know, the mouths might be in the back of their necks. Oh, it, it just terrifies me. Uh, nothing to be scared of. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get to my aerological class. Boy, we sure uh, kidded her, didn't we? Well, I wasn't kidding, Dink. Did you think I was kidding? Sure, I thought you were. Huh? You weren't kidding? No, I'd like to go to Mars. As a matter of fact, I'd like to go before the expedition does. I'd like to get there first. For what? For what? Wouldn't you like to be a hero, Dink? Wouldn't you like to go down in history? Yeah, yeah, I guess so, Mickey. Well, I'm just as glad, though, that there isn't anything we can do about it. Who says there isn't anything we can do about it? But we couldn't go to Mars, Mickey. Why not? Well, we haven't got a spaceship. We can get one. Huh? Here. Look at this in today's facsimile paper. Bargains, values, miracles. Don't buy a second-hand spaceship until you see Tillman's terrific values. A 2020 BG Venus Voyager, eight passenger, $900, like new. Huh. You see, we could just buy one. Except we haven't got $900. Thank goodness. Well, I got $60 I made last summer doing our jobs. And you got 45 But I'm saving that. Now, for... Wait a second. Listen to this. 1989 N2 Rocket Cat, three passengers, 8750 What could you expect? That's our boat. But Mickey... Mickey, it's bound to be a pile of junk. We can do a little work on it and put it in shape in no time. Besides, we'll have 1750 to do it on. Mickey, do you want to go down in history detection? Yeah, but I'm a little uneasy about going up in an 8750 spaceship. <laughs> yeah, I never thought we'd get the old crate home. How's it shaping up, Mickey? Oh, it's great. Did you get that atomic battery off the re-energizer down the fueling station? Oh, I got it right with me, Mick. Only oh, Mick. Yeah? I feel a little shaky about it. And there's no sense pretending I don't. Oh, stop worrying. People have been doing this with old spacecraft ranges. Nah. Sure. 
Way back years ago, kids used to take secondhand rocket ships and do what they called um, the souping them up. I learned about it in history five. You mean they made space mortars that long ago? Sure. Oh, only they called them hot rods. That's funny. I didn't know they did any space traveling way back then. They did some kind of traveling. I saw a picture of one of their crafts. Uh, they called it an aura bubble or a what? Aura bubble or something like that. Oh, you mean an automobile? Yeah, that's it. Did they go through space in them? Where else could they have gone in them? Oh, I thought maybe they just traveled on the ground. Don't be silly. You use jet cars for traveling on the ground. That's right. Gee, Mickey, you're smart. Oh, you got to apply yourself, Dave. That's all. You got to apply yourself. Now, oh, we just give this baby a little test. Uh, hitch up that battery coil to the central explosion power. Right. There we are. Now, we throw the switch for a test. You ready? All set. How's that, Dave? That's terrific. Shall I try the retarding rocket? Go ahead. Well, Jake, it looks like we're in business. Yep. Well, maybe next summer sometime we can cut out and take a stab at reaching Mars and then... Thanks. Yeah. We're going to take that stab tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, maybe? Yes, sir. Tomorrow night. But, gee, we, we could get in a lot of trouble. What trouble? We might get picked up by the space patrol. People ain't allowed to go sizzling around in space without a permit. At least of all in a second-hand job like this. Thanks. Yeah. Remember what my old man does for a living? Sure, he's a space cop. Which would make it all the worse for you if he caught you. It would be plenty bad for me. But he's going to catch me. How can you keep him from it? I can find out where he's going to be and use a planet channel as far from there as possible. Do you think he'll tell you where he's going to be? Oh, he's going to, Dick. You just wait till tonight. <laughs> I swear they'll put anything in the facsimile paper. You're right, Pop. Anything to take up room. Pop, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Here comes some high-frequency scientist with a single-cell brain sounding off about how we should build defenses against an attack from Mars. <laughs> what a knock noodle. Always with a planet. Planet, planet. You're right, Pop. Yeah, they're all alike. Bunch of dreamers with loose bolts in their turrets. Planet travel, planet war, planet exploring. Go to hear these days, planets. You sure are right, Pop. Yep. Hey, how come I'm so right about everything tonight? Oh, well, I don't know, Pop. I, uh, I just happen to agree with you. Uh-huh. Well, stop agreeing with me and eat your egg planet. <laughs> you mean my egg plant? I mean, leave me alone so I can read my paper. <clears throat> uh, hey, Dad. Hmm? Those scientists think they know everything, don't they? Hmm. Now, you take Professor O'Leary at school, the one who teaches us astronomy. Mm. He's supposed to be the last word on how the interplanetary area is operated. And he says that the Space Patrol covers Celestial Channel 7 every night in the week. Huh? That's what he said. Who? Professor O'Leary. What a wise egg. It just so happens we don't touch Channel 7 but once a week. On uh, uh, Sunday night, sir, right? No, Tuesday night. You would think a professor of astronomy would know better than that. I guess he had a date mixed. If a person don't know, they ought to ask. That's the way I figure, Pop. That's just the way I figure. Gee, <laughs> Missy, we did it. Oh, we're on our way, then. You sure we won't run into the space patrol? Didn't I tell you I found out from my old man last night? Okay, you asked for it. Hey, 
ignition. Yeah. Where are we at? Channel 7. How far out in the stratosphere? Stratosphere? Oh, man, you're a bad number. We've been out of the stratosphere for a good 10 minutes now. Look behind you. See? See, it's just a pinpoint. Oh, we sizzling, boy. We're checking with magnetism. Yay! Ha, ha, ha. Do it again. <laughs> This is a light. This is just getting strictly out of sight and on our own. Hey, mate, high and clear, free and high, sizzling, man, sizzling. What is it? Take a look. Oh, off to the left there. Oh, where? Where I'm pointing. Where are you pointing? Oh, oh, smoke. What is it? I don't know. Crazy. Crazy. Oh, it's a cloud. 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 Oh, it's a cloud.
But if we ever lay eyes on you again, if, for instance, we observe you tomorrow night trespassing in this channel, we shall destroy you. We'll be good, sir. You had better, or else we shall disintegrate you and use your energy to feed our rocket power. Oh, no, sir. Please, sir. Then watch your step. Now get back in that obsolete spaceship of yours and close the hatch. Yes, sir. Come on, Jim. Hurry up. Come on, quick, before they think it over. Close the hatch, Jim. That was some trip down. You better close the hangar doors. We don't want anybody to see this space snorter. No, I guess we don't. I was just thinking, Mick. Yeah, I know. Were you thinking too? Uh-huh. Same thing as me? I guess so. What are we going to do? I don't know yet. We know something that nobody else in the world knows. Yeah. We know they're up there. We know they're getting ready to smash us to smithereens. I wish we'd have stayed home, mm -hmm. but we didn't. And now we got to face the facts, Jim. I hate facts, don't you, Mick? Mm, I never thought of it that way exactly, but I, I guess I do. Gee, if we tell, we got to also tell that we went up in the space northern. My old man's going to raise supersonic blazes with me. Well, it's going to blow the roof off. But still, we got to look at it like Earth City. We can't just keep our mouths shut and let the Martians take everybody by surprise. I guess we can't. Are you going to tell? I don't see any other way out. Maybe. Maybe they won't have time to raise blazes with us. Maybe they'll be too busy getting ready to fight them off. Maybe so. But somehow or other, I think my old man will find time. Mickey, what are you getting me here? I tell you, we saw him. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Pop. Pop, you got to believe me. Why do they look like these uh, Martians? Well, we didn't get a good look on account of the lights and all. Now, listen. You're trying to play on my sympathy with this tall story of yours. You think you could pull the wool over my eyes? Nah. I knew you bought that old crate. You did? Why, sure I did. Stillman told me just before I went on duty tonight. You think he's going to sell a jalopy like that to a space cop son without even reporting it? Oh, dear. I never even thought of it. Oh, yes, you did. Probably didn't hit you until you was on your way back. So you make up a yarn to steer me off from giving you what you deserve. No, no, Pop, it ain't like that. They're there, Pop. They're up there spying. Mm. They're getting ready to take over the world. Oh, you gotta believe me. You gotta. Look, you might as well stop garbling. You'll get no allowance for a solid month, Mickey. And if I was Dink's father, I'd give him the same treatment. Oh, stop. Okay. Now, will you just sit down and let me tell you about the Martian? Mickey! She's dead. Won't you just sit down for a minute? No! You mention those Martians to me one more time, I'll see to it that you won't sit down for a week. But police think, well, then I tell you they stopped us. They told us what they got in mind. Uh-huh. Well, now, look, Matt, I... You don't believe me, do you? You, uh, want an honest answer? No, I just want somebody to do something. To do something. Well, I'm going to do something. What? I'm going out to lunch. <laughs> Professor Leary, nobody will listen to me. Of course I understand, boy. They were there. We talked to them. They told us. I'm sure you believe it implicitly, Mickey. Huh? This is a fairly commonplace symptom of the imaginative brain. You and Gink were all prepared to see Martians in Channel 7, and so you just projected them. That's for this professor. can happen to the best of mine, and I'm sure yours is perfectly sound and healthy. Where are you going? I'm getting out of here while well, I've still got a mind left at all. And then what did they do, 
though, Nicky. Oh, what difference does it make me, Bill? Well, I'm just asking, Nicky. You, you mean you believe us? Of course I do. Hey, couldn't you persuade your daddy to take the patrol up tonight? Well, what good would that do? Well, don't you remember what you said? What? That they told you that if you dared to come back tonight, they'd destroy you. Yeah? Well, that means they're going to be here tonight, don't it? No, that won't work. Why not? He won't go. That's why not. As a matter of fact, he told me I'd better not even mention the Martians to him again. He sure makes me mad. And my pop makes me madder. They'll see. They'll start moving when it's too late. When the Martians have taken their homes and their wives and their kids. But now listen. If we went up tonight, and after we were gone a half an hour or so, Maybell went to my pop and told on us. Oh, no. Oh, why not? Because your pop would call my pop, and they'd get the space patrol and come up and... You see, they'd spank coins on us. No, they'd be too busy rescuing us from the Martians. You mean we'd let them take us again? Exactly. It's the only chance we got. But you want to go down in history, don't you? You want to be remembered in the future, don't you? I'm getting so I can take it or leave it alone, man. We well, can't afford to think of ourselves now, Dink. we got to prove what we saw. Maybell? Yes, Nick? At 2030 tonight, I want you to go see my pop. Tell him we're up Channel 7 in an old space snorter. Tell him it's against the law. And he ought to go and get us and bring us back and teach us a lesson. Will you do that? Yes, sir. And Maybell? Yeah, Dick? Tell him to come in a hurry, or there may not be enough left of us to teach us a lesson on. <laughs> How far up are we, then? Just about where we saw him last night, then. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. Listen, do you hear a knock in the motor? That's not a knock in the motor. That's a knock in my knees. Oh, you've got to be brave, then. you got to realize that we got to save the world. That's what I keep telling my knees. But they won't listen. Miss, they threw the static beam again. We, we stopped. Look, to the left. Here they come. Here they come, think they've seen us. Missy? Yeah. They're opening up, Dink. We're gone in. We're gone in. Oh, man. Oh, I wish we'd taken our money and bought a vacant lot. For what? We could have dug a hole and pulled the ground in after it. Oh, you have come back, huh? We shall give you a welcome you won't soon forget. Open your hat and come out. We, um, we just thought we'd come up and see you again. You're fine. Oh, no, sir. Sure, that's fine. What else? You should have caught wise. Listen to me. Quiet, Murrow. Hard to one. Why did we not come off last night when we had the chance? Battle two, Murrow. Oh, I never thought men from Mars talked like that. Burrow happens to come from South Mars. From South Mars is a place I wouldn't want to be. You don't have to worry, Earthman. You'll never be anywhere again. What? You're going to spend the rest of your lives nowhere. Please, mister. What do you mean? I mean we're going to wreck your rocket power and then shoot you out into space. And you'll just hang up there from here on out. No. What's the matter? I want my pop. You won't see your pop no more, but your pop will see you. How? Oh, he'll look up in the sky, and there you'll be a new star. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe he'll make a wish on you. We're giving these creatures too much time. Disintegrate their rockets, Paul. Surrounded on a 10,000-mile radius. Cut to her power before we smash it with a multiplied charge. 
We will board you in 90 seconds. Check out. Here we are, Pop. Here we are. Oh, thank heaven. Thank heaven. Are you, are you okay? We're okay, Mr. Turner. Oh, good. Only if you hadn't come when you did, we would have been just one more star in the sky. You have no authority here. As men, we are subjects of Mars. Go on, Vince Bucky. I know you and your one cylinder pal, Bucky Moe. You're men from Mars like I'm a turbojet transport. You're hijackers laying out here on this planetary route waiting to knock off a few uranium cargo ships as they come back from the lunar mine. There must be some mistake. I told you to knock off those brats when another was good. Just because the new one was a space top gun and the other kid was a pal. You're mighty lucky he didn't listen to you, Mel. As it is, you're in for plenty of trouble. But if you were to touch one of these kids, you would have had to land off from Mars and stay there. Everything all right, Officer Turner? Right, Chief. Nothing left to do but commandeer these rats and their space. I arrest you on my authority as chief of the space patrol. Take a minute. And you two kids are coming back to Earth, where you're going to get exactly what you deserve. And here's a chocolate pie, Nick. Half for you and half for Jane. He's dragging. Only hurry up and eat it before the torchlight parade begins. They're going to carry you on their shoulders to the square. And the mayor's going to make a speech. And, oh, it's going to be wonderful. Gee, it sure is great. I didn't expect anything like this. Terrific, huh, Miss? Uh, I said terrific, huh? Oh, I don't know. What's the matter with you? Well, after all, what we started out to do was to go to Mars. I guess you forgot that. Yeah, I know, Miss. It turned out okay, I guess. But what we did won't get us a place in history. We still ain't gonna be nobody to generations to come. But this chocolate pie tastes awful good to the generation that's already here. Next week, another exciting story from the world of tomorrow. 2000 Plus presents... The Diamond Helmet. 2000 Plus is produced by Sherman H. Dreyer and Robert Wen Olson. In today's story, Ronnie List played Mickey, Ronnie Jacoby was Dink, Colette McMahon was Maybell, Ed Latimer was the father, John Gregg was Bocce, and Sandy Bickert was Murrow. Script by Peter Berry. The orchestra was conducted by Emerson Buckley, music composed by Elliot Jacoby. Sound effects by Walt Shaver and Adrian Penner. This is Bob Emmerich speaking. This program came to you from New York.